Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is what Earth looked like 65 million years ago when the dinosaurs finally perished. Because 65 million years ago, right here in Mexico, there was a very large collision with a meteorite that very likely caused a dramatic shift in climate on our planet. But today we'll talk about something else, climatic shift that's happening right now, and we'll compare it to what happened back then. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So, once upon a time, there was an asteroid that hit our planet in a location that's currently referred to as the Yucatan Peninsula. This rock was about possibly 5 to 6 uh, kilometers in radius and resulted in a somewhat dramatic change of the climate on our planet. The actual climatic changes involved a lot of different things. It obviously started with things like tsunamis and fires, but with time the results of this collision transformed our planet by essentially introducing a lot of things into the oceans, into the atmosphere, and first of all acidifying the oceans, and second of all turning the atmosphere very different from what it is today. Now, a lot of interesting discoveries have been made in the last few decades about this particular collision, but today we're actually trying to figure out if the extinction event that was caused by this asteroid was more or less equivalent in terms of the actual effects to what we're doing to Earth today. And obviously here we're not talking about us throwing actual asteroids at our planet, we're talking about the after effects, the effects of the climatic change that followed all of this when all of this was released into the oceans and into the atmosphere. And I have recently made a video about one of these discoveries, which suggested that the um, asteroid here did actually dramatically change oceans, turning them acidic, and thus killing off a lot of ocean life that would be providing uh, food for other animals. But at the same time, we also know that it changed the atmosphere as well, not just the oceans. And this is where we need to start analyzing what exactly happened to the atmosphere of our planet. Now, interestingly, all of the uh, major mass extinction events, specifically the five that are pretty well known to science, have all been caused by some sort of an event that dramatically changed atmospheric conditions. Usually the culprit here was some sort of a massive and very powerful volcano, but in some cases it could have been something different. For most of these extinction events, we mostly see the effects and the results, not so much the causes. And one of the uh, very unusual similarities between all of these extinction events is that, for the most part, they all involved a dramatic change in various elements that we are today calling the greenhouse gases, for example, carbon gases. Now, this beautiful chart was made by this wonderful person whose name it's very difficult for me to pronounce, but he essentially made this summary showing us the overall summary of all five extinctions. And it becomes pretty obvious here that methane and CO2 do appear in most of the extinction events, so measuring their values when these events happened is kind of important. And one of the biggest research teams involves thousands of scientists in this so-called Deep Carbon Observatory, with pretty much uh, hundreds of studies from all over the world that have established a very clear um, carbon history of our planet. In other words, um, the scientists from the so-called Deep Carbon Observatory over the years and over the decades were able to establish an extremely accurately measured historical account of how much carbon, and specifically carbon dioxide, was in the atmosphere over millions of years. And not just carbon dioxide and carbon in the air, they also were able to calculate how much of it was in water and how much of it was in the actual um, deposits inside Earth. And one of the major findings is that, well, usually, even when carbon changes on our planet, our planet is usually pretty good at self-regulating. In other words, our planet is really good at maintaining a relatively stable carbon cycle, with the only exception being very catastrophic disturbances, such as, for example, those that happen around the extinction events. And so the only time where carbon would be basically out of whack would be when a volcano erupted or when there was a major catastrophic uh, collision with an asteroid. But during every other time in history of our planet, the carbon was always good at sort of circulating in a relatively balanced way. So there would always be a way for the planet to put carbon back into the actual um, soil or to release it if it needed to be released. However, the extinction events were correlated with sudden changes in carbon and often methane. 
In other words, um, pretty much every major event here would have a dramatic shift of the values of carbon. And that doesn't mean that it always increased, sometimes it decreased dramatically. So something would cause carbon values to change and it would correlate with a dramatic extinction event. And according to the recent publications from the Deep Carbon Observatory, the researchers argue that we need to understand the changes of carbon on our planet in order for us to understand potential climatic changes that could cause another extinction. And one of the major discoveries here is that, well, it seems that we've already burned pretty much approximately 4 million years worth of deposits of carbon. And on top of that, since 1750s, basically since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, if you were to kind of combine all of the carbon that was released into the atmosphere, it's actually higher than the amount of carbon released by this massive collision. And just to give you some numbers here, they've calculated that the collision 65 million years ago released approximately 1400 gigatons of carbon. And obviously all of this was more or less instant, probably took only a few minutes, but we managed to release just as much in only a few hundred years. Actually more than that. Even though the value here was about 1400 gigatons, the DCO researchers calculated that the human-made carbon is around 2000 gigatons. So already at least 150% the value of the carbon released by the asteroid. And although sometimes we do hear a counter-argument saying that, well, all of this carbon could have been released by all of the volcanoes that happened over the years, including some of the more recent eruptions, they've also calculated the amount of carbon released by volcanoes. And humans release 80 times more carbon than actual volcanoes right now. So our emissions are dramatically higher than anything in nature. And just to give you some numbers, the volcanoes, the total emission of volcanoes is about 0.4 gigatons per year, whereas the human emissions are equivalent to about 37 gigatons every single year. And remember, the asteroid only released about 1400 gigatons when it collided with our planet. But unfortunately, what's worse is that the number has actually been growing every single year. And as you can see from this graph but made by NOAA, the uh, government organization, the number has been quite uh, dramatically increasing every single year. And so in that sense, the scale of human disruption of the planet is at this point equivalent to a massive extinction event. Specifically here, we might as well start making the sixth column and start putting in some values as well. And one of the scarier parts here is that following the collision with the asteroid, the climatic conditions have not actually changed for thousands if not millions of years. So whatever we do to our planet now is going to last for quite a while. And what's worse is that um, overall our planet has a lot more carbon inside. It's still sort of there waiting for I guess us to extract it and to use it in some way. There's about 1.8 billion gigatons of carbon still hidden in the planet and if by some unfortunate event we'll one day release even half of it, our planet is going to turn even hotter than Venus. It's going to be a world uh, that nothing will be able to survive on. Well, anyway. Hopefully it doesn't come to that and hopefully in the next few years we'll figure these things out. But the research coming out of the Deep Carbon Observatory and a lot of other research that investigated the effects of carbon on our planet is exceptionally important to us right now. Even though a lot of people still don't actually believe in the effects of carbon on our planet and there are a lot of politicians that try to avoid the topic, it is one of the most important topics to discuss and to try to find a solution to right now. But. That's really it. That's all I wanted to show you in this video. Check out some of the research I mentioned in the description below. And most importantly, remember that until we figure out how to colonize other planets, this is really it. This is the only home we have. On that note, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.